I'm just back from downtown. I had to go to a specialty shop to get this finish for the project. It's a wax, hard wax based finish. Got a little bit of linseed oil in it and I haven't had much luck with linseed in the past. It says it has a tendency to stay gummy and it doesn't dry quickly and in this humid environment that's always a problem. But they say this is different and I've seen them apply this. I'm looking forward to giving it a try. We'll finish this project up in this episode, but you can't start finishing until you get started. I'll see you inside. I'm Roby Price, and welcome to my garage workshop. In this series, we're building a spalted pecan dresser. It's time to finish. I'm just sanding down most of these flat surfaces. I'm not going to 120, I'm going to 150. And I will sand these down as best I can. And of course, you've got to get the roundovers done too. You can make short work with a sandy block with as many flat surfaces as I've got. But when it comes down to it, the corners are important too. So a little bit of sanding in the corners is important. Now keep in mind, I'm not interested in trying to produce a smooth surface. I'm trying to rough it up. So this has already been a smooth surface. So my work here is merely to make sure I touch everything, not to make sure that everything is leveled out or smoothed out. So this will go pretty fast. I'm gonna finish this up and of course, get into all the details with this bead here in the sides. And uh, after that, blow it out, and then we'll move on to the next step. Well, the next step in this is to take down the sponge and wet this. And what that's going to do, it is going to raise the grain. Now, keep in mind, I just finished sanding this, and that was to rough it up. And I, <laughs> believe it or not, I wanted it roughed up so I could raise more grain. Part of this process is to pop, pop the figure of the wood, and part of that is to raise the grain up. Now, we will do that, and I'm using distilled water because I don't want to get any mineral traces. I don't know what the water is like in your neighborhood or how well it is filtered, but quite frankly, it doesn't take a whole lot of iron. You know, they use iron for dye. It uh, doesn't take a whole lot of iron or calcium to cause yourself a lot of trouble. So, use distilled water and be done with it. Wipe down the, the surface. You don't want it to be soaking wet. You just want to change the color. And once done, the grain will raise for you. And you go back and sand it down again. I'll tell you what, that did raise the grain a good bit. And this time, instead of just scuffing it up, I have to smooth it out. Otherwise, I'm going to be in trouble. So, we'll pay a little closer attention. There's nothing like rubbing your fingers across it to tell you when it's done. Three. After knocking all the grain down, I want to blow this off. Now, a lot of times people will say, you blow it off, you can end up opening things up a little bit more, and sometimes you don't want to do that. But with this particular finish, I want these oils to get as deep into the grain as I can. So when I blow this out, I'm looking to blow out all of it. And in all honesty, there's another step to this. <laughs> Surprise. The uh, prep is everything. They actually make a cleaning product now, if you go on the internet, you look up how to apply this stuff, they will tell you that this is mineral spirits, but 
I, uh, I've invested a lot into this piece of this drawer right here. And at this point in time, if I end up with mineral spirits that is polluted or has some additives in it that I don't want and could stain the finish, I don't want to take that chance. So every step I've made into this particular drawer front is coming up to now, and I could ruin it by using the wrong cleaner or not cleaning at all. And so, yes, it's expensive, but you know something? So is making a new drawer, coming up with a wood, finding everything that is just right. Quite honestly, sometimes discretion is the better part of valor. So I will use the product that they say. Now what this is supposed to do, it is supposed to pick up all the remaining sawdust on the piece. You wipe it down and it's supposed to be very clean and it preps the wood to receive the oil. It's the final step. Now this will not raise the grain. It just won't. Get rid of that. So I will wipe the whole piece down prior to putting the oil on. As I said before, this is a two-part mixture. So what I have done, I mean, uh, three parts of this to one part of the accelerant. So what I have done is I've bought myself some cheapo syringes. You can use cups, ladles, thimbles, I don't care. But there's two lessons here. One is get the ratio right. Do not mix this with that, so use separate syringes. And this stuff is liquid gold, so don't mix up more than you're going to use. Now generally, for the last drawer, I used quite a bit more than this. So I'm going to put two batches in. Each one of these is three millimeters, which is not in itself important. It's just the number of each on each. And then at that point, I like to mix it up with a cheapo plastic knife. And then we start to apply it. And we'll do that here in just a second. I want to clean up first. There's a hundred YouTube videos on this. So I'm not breaking any new ground here. But I will say this. I have found some people, and that was too much. Some people have said they go straight to this scotch Bright to rub it in. I have done some of that and I have found Got just a little bit of a nick in there, and I don't want him in there. So I'll move him to the side. I have found this actually does better for spreading it out and getting a thin coat. Now, according to the instructions, and at this point I'm starting to believe the instructions. Imagine that. You just need, all this stuff needs to do is just touch the surface. So... Spreading it this way is the first step, and it's going to get old here Watch, listening to me talk while I try to spread this around. The next step, and that involves Scotch-Brite, and what I'm doing right now is I'm just trying to get this panel set up with enough oil such that everything has been touched, and good light is helpful in this regard. And again, you don't need much because what I'm hoping to do here in a minute is to take what little is left here and move it on to the other side. I know, it seems excessive. And 
this seems excessive too. I mean, every little bit of this stuff, it's gold. It's very expensive. So we want to use up all of it, spread it out accordingly. And then I take my scotch bright and I rub it in. And this, according to the instruction, forces it down into the pores even more. Now, this is a clean hand at the moment, but it won't be because I have a man, I have managed in the past to get this stuff all finishes all over me at any given time. So keep a couple of these on hand and that'll help keep the fingerprints from showing up later. Now, instructions say give this about 15 minutes and then after this step is done, buff out the excess. You do not need a lot of this. You really don't need a lot of this. Just enough to coat the surface. And it is a wax, but it's a linseed oil product as well, or at least it's got oil in it. And that oil will gum up, so you're better off getting rid of it. Believe it or not, less is more. So this is going to take a while. I'm going to do the whole drawer. I'm going to save the front for last, and then we'll look at it. Uh, it's important to get all the extra off, and you can already tell that this has had a dramatic change in color. And I'm going to do this. I don't have a camera overhead, so you'll have to take a look at this as is. The, um, but I assure you, it's going to be quite dramatic. I will take a few other pictures as I go. As you can see, it doesn't take much, and even this is probably a little bit more than I would have done initially. And here it goes. If you think that's dramatic, wait till you start to see how this comes out. Now, the reason I'm being careful not to get runs is not because I'm worried about the runs. I can wipe that up. What I'm concerned about is preserving the material. I have a limited amount. I want to use it all, but I want to use as little as possible. It's expensive. Now I will probably take the pad and when I rub it in, I'm going to take the pad and get it rubbed into the bead. Yes, I have been very conservative here. I need more. But you can start to see how this is going from a light marbled look to something that's actually very dramatic. All right, that should be give me enough. This is the last section. All right, I'm going to rub it in and take this excess. I've got right here and rub it into the bead. And if I can't get the bead to go, I'll get some more. Now we'll rub all this in really good, but we buff it off about 10 minutes after. But I have to get it, I have to coat it all. It has to be coated. That much is a requirement, which is why I'm doing this. If I don't get it all into every crack, it's not going to go. Yeah, now you can see it. And again, this is to help rub it into the pores. You want it into the pores. You 
most amazing thing about this type of wood when you have a contour like this bead right here is when you see the figure go past the bead you know immediately it's solid wood and not a veneer. That little bitty bead right there, getting that little bit in that crack is probably as important as anything else. <laughs> wow. All right, give that just a little bit of time. Not much, 10 minutes. Shazam. Oh yeah, I'll take some pictures later. Well, one of the last steps to this finish is to rub it down. You wanna make sure you get all the excess off. You can put on all this stuff you want, but you have to take it all off afterwards because if you leave it on, it gums up, becomes a mess, and it doesn't dry real well. It needs that thin, thin layer to, uh, to do well. This color turned out real nice. It's quite a surprise. Well, surprise to some. So this is pretty much getting finished. The, um, I'm gonna take the paste wax. We will coat up all the surfaces with uh, paste wax. That'll help the drawers run in and out a little smoother. So that's a step that's coming. Every surface, both sides, and it's critical, both sides have been finished. That's everywhere. I don't want any, any moisture in one side different than the other. And the next step is this top. This top, we're gonna do the same thing we did the last time. We're gonna take it down to, a, to 120. The edges are gonna be 150. I will do the back side first. I'm not gonna bother to sand the underside of this because I don't need this material to, to pop the same way I do this. But I will, I will raise the grain with water on both sides. Again, keep the moisture content same on both. And I will clean both sides with the cleaner. So that's the next step. So we're gonna get busy and we're gonna start sanding. Well, I've still got a little bit more finishing work to do. As a matter of fact, the last piece that needs a coat of Rubio Monocoat is right there. And you may think that it looks finished, but the other side is not. So the other side has some markings on it that help me align the nail gun so that I can hit each one of the drawer runners and make sure that we get a good solid setup, a good solid backing for this cabinet. Additionally, I've got some of the space right there that isn't finished. That's to help the glue set on the handles. Everything's going together just right. But I do have some more finishing work to do on that, which is why I'm in my duds. Before I put the back on, I don't want to fight these drawers and getting to pull out. So I want to put the holes in for the drawer knobs and hopefully put the knobs on themselves. So I've got some frog tape set up roughly in the middle, and that's what this string is to help me for, is to get the, the, the frog tape set up so that I have a place to put some markings for where the drawer knobs go. Now I'll take a T-square and I will measure from the side of this cabinet, not the drawer, the side. And why is that? Well, the eye is going to be keyed in on the drawer knobs. It'll see everything. But the line out, each one of these drawers may be a 30 second out. Your eye will pick it up on the drawer knob. It won't pick it up on the side of the drawer. It's amazing what the eye sees and it's amazing what it doesn't. So we will be measuring from the side here and all these will line up that way. That gets us halfway there because in all honesty, we also have to align in the center of the drawer. And that's what this jig is here. What I've done is 
I have measured very precisely the distance between here to here and here to here. And this hole right here in the middle is centered exactly between the two. So that when I take these two nuts like this and I put them on either side and I center them up, this hole is exactly vertically centered. And it doesn't matter how wide the drawer is, it will find the center every time. And this is a quick and easy technique to use. I take myself a little pen, I put a little mark in here just like I've done there. So I will be making marks on all of these and getting set up and I'll drill all these out with the brad point bit. Now we have our, our bit marked and the trick is take a block that you know is perpendicular at the base. This will help guide the drill. Get that brad point centered right on the and then give it a little bit of a time. I seat it. Get that. Nut. Well, I've taken a seat, and that's primarily to get some glue on this. And I know it's not going to be a strong bond, primarily because I've got a little bit of the finish on this right here, not a lot. But I'm not going to put a lot of glue on it. There is no glue on the other side. But I just want something to get a tack. I will be nailing in these areas right here. So I expect that most of the strength is going to be from the brads. Now what I don't want to do is I don't want to drip here. Like so many things, it's the prep. And that's what we have now. We're going to put this in just like that. And I've got a block here that I am going to use to hold this section in place. There we go. <laughs> it really does want to come down. <laughs> Between the two of these, we should be able to get it. All right. Now, you have to make sure it lines up. All right, it will go everywhere. Now, let's get a little clamping pressure right here. All right, and the top fits, which is a bonus. Take some half inch brads. We'll start putting it in place. Now, I have lines marked here at each one of those spots. I will put brads in each one of those to secure this. It won't move when I'm done, but I don't expect you to watch me do this. This is the last of the finishing work that needs to be done. I tell you what, this stuff will make even junk plywood look good. We're finished. Spalted pecan is magnificent.
and a low luster hard wax on this brings it out perfectly. The low sheen is actually perfect for this type of material. It gives it a very, very rustic, antique look. You know, the sides of this, on any other piece of furniture, they would be something else. The thing I like about a hard wax finish is it sure makes those drawers slide in and out real easy. This piece weighs in at over 200 pounds without the drawers. It is heavy. And that, you're going to find that anytime you work with a pecan or hickory or an oak, when, especially when you use that for the secondaries, the weight just starts to add up. So it's a good thing there are handles in the back to help pick it up and move this piece. The owner picks it up today, and that'll do it for this series. It also is the end of Roby's Garage Workshop. We are moving to a new facility. And in that facility, in that house, uh, there is a building, a shop, and that will become Roby's Workshop. So I hope you'll join us for our new episode in our new venue. We're going to be breaking all this stuff down. So there's going to be a lot going on besides woodworking. And we'll put out episodes more frequently, but they're going to have a little more variety. So I hope to see you in Roby's Workshop coming up soon.